So you want to make a game, you downloaded Unreal Engine, you've been watching a lot of videos and reading a lot of documentation, and every time you go to try anything, you forget what you have learned, and you end up watching a lot of videos and doing a lot more reading. And you find yourself in an endless rabbit hole, re-watching and re-reading things you've already learned, and you have not been able to accomplish much. This was my experience when I started to learn Unreal Engine, and I decided that the best way that I learn is through practice. When you are brand new to game development, you don't really know what it is you need to be practicing. However, I had found that my most common issue was that I was still struggling to understand how to work in blueprints. So I am starting a video series on learning algorithms and data structures in order to have a way to practice working in blueprints. And the main goal out of learning algorithms and data structures is to develop a workflow. Once I finally started to understand how to use blueprints and develop my workflow, I could finally start to work with a lot of the other tools now that I had some practice of the rudiments. Some of the algorithms that we practice, you may or may not ever use. However, keep in mind that the goal is to develop a workflow. The practice of these algorithms and data structures may open up new ways for you to think about game development. Now, because we are working in blueprints and working a lot with data, we are not going to be using much of anything that we have in our level. So for this example, I have the first person template open but you can literally use any template or a completely blank template. It does not matter because we will not be using anything at all in the level. But what we will be using in our viewport is going to be the widget class. Before we begin this series, I want to start off with a simple standard setup that we will be using as we go throughout this learning process. In our content drawer, we have all of these folders and I'm going to create my own folder just for algorithms. Let's open up the algorithms folder. We are not going to be using a lot of different classes, but there are some very basic ones that we will be working from. For the front end, we will be using a widget, and for the back end, we will be using the object class. Go ahead and right click, scroll to the bottom, and in user interface, select user widget. And in our next video, we are going to start off with the insertion sort algorithm. So let's name our widget relating to our insertion sort algorithm. W for widget. Sort. Now let's create an object class. Right click blueprint class, and here we have object class. Choose select, and let's go on ahead and simply name it insertion sort. So our widget class will be our front end, and the actual algorithm we will be creating in our object class that we named insertion sort. But before we can begin doing that, we need to do a little bit more setup. Let's back out of our folders, and if we go into the first person folder, into blueprints, here we will find the game mode. The game mode is one of the high level classes that gets initialized during the startup process. Whenever you think about your game mode, you want to think about this section over here in the details. When the game mode is initialized, it is also going to initialize all of these other classes and anything else that is being called in the event graph. In order to use the widget class that we just created, we are going to use our game mode to create our widget and add it to our viewport. So in our game mode, let's first right click, type begin, and we will use the event begin play. Off of event begin play, let's create widget. And the widget is the insertion sort widget that we just made. I want to get into the habit of when we create something, 
or construct something that we save it as a variable. Off of the turn, drag out, promote it to a variable. Now the widget is existing, but we still cannot do anything with it yet. Drag off of the variable set and type add to viewport. Now when we begin play, our widget class will appear in the viewport. However, we haven't created anything in the viewport yet, so currently nothing will show up. But let's see what happens when we select play. We can see our mouse cursor, and when we left click, we're now in our template as usual, but I want to be able to work with just my widget class. Now, if you have not learned yet, the mouse cursor is a property of the player controller class. We are going to need to access our player controller class and then select for our mouse cursor to show on screen. For this, we need to have a reference to our default player controller. So let's right click, search player controller, and from the player controller, drag out and search set input. And we have these three options here we are going to select that our input is going to operate within UI only. It is also asking for an in widget to focus. Go ahead and get the reference to your insertion sort. And one more thing that we want to get out of our player controller is to show the mouse cursor on screen. So let's drag out and search show and here we have the variable set show mouse cursor. Make sure you tick it. So now after you compile and save and select play, we can see our mouse cursor as we click and we have no interaction with what is going on in the level except for our user interface. So this is going to be the standard setup as we go through this series on algorithms and data structures. We are going to be using a widget to create a front end that we can interact with at runtime and an object class that will utilize the functionality of our algorithms. We are going to use the game mode to create our widget class, add it to the viewport, and then to set the player controller settings.